Well, John, you talked a little bit about what you know, what people are going to need to do to make sure the national park system stays strong for, for years to come. What, what's the biggest thing people can do to, to make sure this thing keeps going? Well, they, get, they need to care uh, about these places, and I think that care comes from visiting and experiencing uh, the parks, um, and then um, they need to translate that into some sort of advocacy, constituency, volunteerism, philanthropy. So don't just visit, but actually take action. And you also talked a lot about uh, trying to pass that on to the younger generation. And exactly. W w what is going to be the, the key to, to making sure that the younger generation cares about these places the way that uh, you know maybe some of the older people in the country do? Well, I think that you know my generation, who really experienced uh, you know conservation, environmental movement in the '60s and '70s, um, need to sort of embrace the young generation, uh, give them some mentoring, some guidance, but be ready to hand it off to them and say, you know, you don't have to do it the same way I did it, uh, any more than I did it the same way my parents did it, um, but, but you do have a responsibility. Uh, you have a stewardship responsibility to care for these places so that they will be available to your children. That's how it works. I think probably people will be surprised a little bit at how long the list of Idaho National Parks properties is with things like Hagerman fossil beds that people maybe don't think of. Well, you, you got a, a favorite spot in Idaho among the parks or, or something that maybe people don't think about very much that, that you like? Well, I, obviously, so having worked at Craters of the Moon, uh, that's a favorite of mine. Uh, you know, all the places that I've worked in my career, it was one of the most unique and interesting uh, geologic areas. Uh, and that part of the Snake River Plain is a really fascinating part of Idaho, very different than, than Boise. Um, I, I also really like uh, the Nez Perce sites, uh, you know, that really tell the story of the Nez Perce Indians. Uh, and that's sort of the northern part of Idaho. Uh, it slopped over into Washington, parts of Oregon as well. But uh, I think that's really special. Hagerman, Hagerman Horse, City of Rocks, uh, the sliver of Yellowstone, you know, they're all great, great Idaho places. Min um, Minidoka, uh, a lot of people don't know about that, but that's, you know, one of the Japanese American confinement sites. Uh, very interesting, you know, there was a fence across the front, but no fence in the back. And uh, the Japanese Americans that were there worked in the agricultural fields during World War II, and most of the men were off at war. They were uh, a big part of the agricultural community here in Idaho. Obviously, there, there's talk in our state about uh, not having a, you know, except for the little sliver of Yellowstone, not having an actual national park in Idaho. Some talk about do you convert Craters of the Moon to a national park? Do you see a, an opportunity for Idaho to have a national park of its own? Well, uh, you know, certainly there was a big movement at one point for the sawtooths, uh, but I think that's come and gone, uh, and that certainly would qualify. Um, but, you know, what uh, establishment of national parks is up to Congress, and I'll leave it to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, outside of the, the celebration this year with the 100 years, the biggest time you your national parks in the news was somebody doing something uh, unwise or around an animal or, or uh, a hot springs. Or How do you deal with that as a national park service? That well, I think that people have been doing kind of dumb things with wildlife for a long time. It's just now that they're social media so they can show themselves doing it. <laughs> and uh, and that's what's generated the news. Uh, you know, the person with the bison in the back seat of their car and Yellowstone. Or, and some of the stuff that they're doing is pretty dangerous. And that's, that's concerning to us. Um, so we're really being a little more aggressive about public education, particularly for our international visitors who just may not know that, you know, taking a picture with a, a selfie with a bison is really a bad idea. Um, you're uh, walking away after 40 years with, with the National Park Service. What uh, what are you going to take with you from this experience? Uh, what's going to be the biggest thing you, you take with you from, from spending that much time around national parks? Well, uh, you know, I'm pretty healthy. I'm in good condition, and I think that's from being outside. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I have a love for the parks and public lands. I have great respect for our public servants that, that work every day and do incredibly hard work. Uh, for the American people, uh, and I will always be uh, their supporter.